we're going to talk about why you may have sharp stomach pain that comes and goes. There are actually 10 reasons for this specific symptom. The first one is something called SIBO, and that stands for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, take a look at this. You have the small intestine right here, and you have the large intestine right here. Now, normally, you're supposed to have all the bacteria or most of the bacteria in the large intestine and not the small intestine. Now, you do have some bacteria in the small intestine, but the majority is in the large intestine where it ferments, especially fiber. When you have an imbalance, where you have too many microbes in the small intestine, what happens when you eat, especially probiotics, because you're actually taking in microbes, or fiber, as in vegetables, when the fiber goes in here, you, the microbes start eating the fiber and start to create this fermentation. So you get all this gas, and the microbes also will compete for the nutrients. So you end up uh, becoming deprived of nutrients because they're pretty much eating everything that they see. Normally, you're not supposed to have all those microbes in here. Instead, you're supposed to have enzymes digesting the food from the pancreas and the lining of the small intestine and then breaking down the food and 90% of it is supposed to be absorbed in the small intestine. So the worst thing to consume when you have SIBO is vegetables. So this is a good time to, to be a carnivore for a couple months so you can actually clean this thing out. And if you do have SIBO, and I have videos on it, I'll put a link down below, you need to be taking betaine hydrochloride to acidify the stomach so you can kill off the microbes in the stomach so they don't end up in the small intestine. Number two, let's say you have a part of your intestine, just a part of it, the, the part that's at the very end right here, let's say this is inflamed, okay? Let's say you have ileitis, which is inflammation of the ileum right down over here. And you eat food, and it goes through this long little tube right here, no pain, no pain, and then it hits this area of inflammation that's raw, and you just start hurting, okay? So if you have inflammation in a certain part of your colon, that's why you get this sharp uh, stomach pain. And this usually comes from damage with something that you're eating, whether it's a food allergy, okay, like gluten, for example, or other allergies, in which case you need to do a a food allergy test and avoid those foods so you can start healing this area. So I probably should just add gluten and food allergies. Also, if you have an ulcer in part of your colon, that can also cause pain. And by the way, chlorophyll is a great way to heal an ulcer. All right, number three, the gallbladder and the bile duct. So you got the liver right here that makes bile. It comes down into this common bile duct. It's a little tube and it goes into the gallbladder where it's concentrated. And then when you eat, this thing contracts and it pushes it out into the small intestine with help of the enzymes from the pancreas together. So we have bile plus lipase, which is the enzyme from the pancreas to help break down fats. But if you're eating the wrong type of food or you have high levels of estrogen or cortisol, you can develop a stone either in the gallbladder or in the bile duct and that can create a lot of irritation. Or if you're eating the wrong type of foods like junk foods and vegetable oils like corn oil or soy oil, which is highly inflammatory, that can irritate these ducts right here and cause all sorts of pain and bloating. When it becomes distended, okay, that pressure can cause pain. So a problem with the gallbladder and this bile duct is very common. I put some links down below for you to get more data on that area. Number four, the pancreas or the pancreatic duct. Okay, so the pancreas makes enzymes. The pancreas also makes insulin, okay? So it actually makes a hormone, actually several hormones, and enzymes. It has both functions. If you're consuming too many carbohydrates, you're gonna cause that pancreas to work really, really hard because it has to pump out a tremendous amount of insulin. Now realize, this pancreas has a dual function. It's making hormones and it's also making enzymes. So if you're stimulating one part of the pancreas, you're also stimulating the other part too. So you're creating a big strain and that can interfere with the normal flow of digestive juices coming through here 
and it can swell up and it can cause all sorts of problems like pain, congestion, especially sharp pain. And grains is probably the number one reason why a lot of people have sharp pain in their stomach. And for some people, this could be literally poisonous to their system and really create a lot of damage into the small intestine through here. And again, the food allergies as well. Okay, number six, fortification. Um, what do I mean by fortification? Well, they enrich flour products with iron and synthetic vitamins. Iron is very, very toxic to the microbes and to your body, especially with men and postmenopausal women who are not menstruating and getting rid of their, their blood each month. So our bodies don't have a good um, ability to get rid of excessive amounts of iron. And iron is very, very um, damaging to our brains, to our gut, and to the liver especially. It can create all sorts of issues, including cirrhosis. So when someone's consuming grains, in America, especially in Canada, in the UK, it's fortified, okay, with iron. And that's one of the reasons why it just tears up your stomach. In other countries that don't fortify, they can somehow get away with consuming grains and not have the bloating and the digestive issues, but they still have the weight gain because it turns into carbs pretty fast. But the other thing that European countries will do and uh, other countries around the world is that they will make bread products a little bit differently. They'll make the dough and then they'll let it ferment overnight. As compared to the bread in the US where they don't ferment it very long, it ends up fermenting in your gut. So you feel a lot of bloating. And anytime you feel bloating, you're gonna get pain. We've already talked about vegetable oils. These are like the soy oils, canola, the corn oil, cottonseed oil. These are highly inflammatory to the digestive system. And the amount of consumption of these oils are off the charts. And this is hidden in a lot of foods, especially salad dressing, mayonnaise, and you're consuming it on a regular basis and not even really realizing that this could be the reason why you have all this pain in your gut. And then we have GMO grains. So this would be soy and corn, and even wheat is sprayed with glyphosate, which is the Roundup Ready, which can really irritate your digestive system and affect these microbes. Number nine, low stomach acid. This is very, very common. If you don't have enough acid in your stomach, what's gonna happen is the food is going to go through here slightly undigested. And as the food is not digested up here, it ends up down here creating a huge strain and you're gonna get abnormal fermentation, bloating, and pain. Simple problem, you just need to add apple cider vinegar and betaine hydrochloride and problem solved. And the last thing is frequent eating. If you're doing six meals a day, three meals with three snacks, not a good idea. When you do intermittent fasting, you allow the gut to heal and rest. So if you're experiencing sharp pain and you're getting bloating, you really need to do intermittent fasting. It's the absolute best thing to do. It gives your whole system a chance to reset and heal. As far as protein goes, you don't wanna to do too much. You wanna do a moderate amount because too much protein can also overload the digestive system, especially if you don't have enough stomach acid. And also you wanna keep your carbs lower because that can really irritate the liver and the gallbladder and especially the pancreas. And normally I recommend a lot of vegetables, but not if you have SIBO. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And if you haven't already subscribed, click the red button below and that little bell icon so you can be notified of all the new videos that I'm gonna be releasing. And I have some very cool and interesting videos coming up in the next coming weeks. Plus, in addition to that, you'll be notified of the live Q&A sessions that I'm gonna be doing throughout the week and you don't wanna miss those as well. So stay tuned for more great content.